Hello, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. I'm in my classroom, in my studio, and today I want to talk about paper, paints, and brushes. Now, the ones that I use, uh, I have on my website that you will talk about in a few minutes, but let me show you some things and some of the techniques that I have, but really most important, why I use uh, these particular objects. So let me go over to the painting table and uh, give you an idea. Now the three main brushes that I have that I use all the time, I have other brushes, but these are the main three. This is a three quarter inch natural hair brush by Silver Brush, it's a nice brush. Another one I have is a number six round. It's a designer round, uh, which gets me a fine point, but also holds a lot of water. It's also natural hair. And then the last one I show is a rigger, a number two rigger which has long hair and gives me the idea of getting uh, small marks. The paper I use, uh, I use, this is 140 pounds, this is a quarter sheet here I have on a painting table. It's 140 pound Gemini made by Strathmore and I also use 300 pound. Now this Gemini paper is uh, pretty special. It's artist quality, archival, uh, but it has special, it has extra sizing on the top and extra sizing in the middle. Now, why is sizing so important? Well, the sizing of the paper allows me to put paint down, and then I can remove the paint right away, or after it has dried, I can still remove it. And the internal sizing allows me to, after I've removed that paint, to go back and put a hard line uh, on top of the paper. Some other papers won't allow you to do that. When you, once you've painted it and dried and try to take it off, uh, you can't repaint it again. Uh, the paints I use, uh, this is a Holbein brand, uh, artist quality paint. This happens to be, uh, you go up close to the camera. This happens to be Hooker's Green. It's a five milliliter tube. Uh, and here's a tube of this happens to be permanent red, but the five milliliter, five milliliter tube of paint uh, goes a long way. Uh, that's probably the most economical way to buy paint is uh, buy a larger tube and then spread it out on your palette. Uh, let me go ahead. Uh, let me talk about color now uh, using the paint brushes. I'm going to use my uh, three quarter inch flat. Uh, I have them spread out just almost like the color wheel. I have my warm colors on one side. Over here I have my warm colors and over here I have my cool colors, cool color blue. And down at the bottom I have my neutral colors. I have burnt sienna and greens down at the bottom. So I really want to, uh, when I talk about color, I really want to talk about the color wheel because the color wheel is very important. If, if you paint a color down, yellow, lemon yellow. And then you pick up the permanent red. The color in between is a mixture. And what I like to do sometimes is take, take the uh, lemon yellow and a little bit of the permanent red and I can make my own orange. Now this orange is one of a kind because it's a mixture of that red and that yellow. Now if I if I wanted to go to my palette and use the orange that I have already mixed there. So I have a yellow, orange, and red but I also have a mixture of red and yellow which gives me a different color but it's also something I can do to make a, a variety of color on my, on my painting. Now let's talk about blues. Uh, but before you get to blue, there's the transition color, and I call that Konakadom Violet. Konakadom Violet is a beautiful color. It's a violet, but it's, a, it's uh, what I call is red bias. It has a red in it, a red paint, or a red, a red U mixed in with a pile. The next, the next color I put next to that is ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue is, uh, 
as a blue, but it's also biased with a, it has a little bit of red in it. So I'm still over here the red, the quinacridone violet, and then the ultramarine blue. I still have got red on this this part of the on this part of the uh, color wheel. And then as I come down to the blues, I have cobalt blue. Now cobalt blue is the purest blue on the palette, and cobalt blue is is really a primary color. The pyro, the uh, permanent red or pyro red is a perm is a is a good primary red, and the cobalt blue is a good primary blue. Everything in between is secondary colors or a mixture of those colors. And the other color I have in my palette is Cooker's Green. And Hooker's Green is in between the yellow and the blue. It's a mixture. But out of the tube, it looks like that. Now, if I took, if I took Cobalt Blue and mixed it with a yellow lemon, which sometimes I do, now when you mix a dark color, you want to make sure, and you want to pick up a light color, you want to make sure your, your uh, brush is clean. And what I do is I, I rinse it out with the water, then I pick up my and when I handle my brushes, also I never touch. I never touch the bristles. I always use a cloth or a tissue to uh, to handle the, the hairs because I don't want the oil from my fingers or anything to to damage the bristles. So if I take the yellow lemon from the palette. And then I rinse that out and I pick up the cobalt blue. And I mix those together on the paper. And see the blue's a little stronger than yellow. Usually if you have two colors that you're gonna mix, uh, the darker color is gonna take over. So you really have to think about putting more more of the lighter color into your mix in order for it to come out. What you're looking for. Take some more of this cobalt blue. Another way I want to look at that is I could take, this is a good way just to play with your paints, get to use, get used to what they do. I'll put that, I'll put that lemon yellow up here again, and then take a little bit of that, uh, take the corner of the brush, pick up some of that cobalt blue, and kind of move, just move it in there. That will give me a light green. That blue and that yellow gives me that light green. Now I have light green on my palette. But the, the, the two colors are, are, are so rich and, and really they're not really, they don't look like anything in nature. So it's better to have uh, enough colors where you can make mixes that look like what you're going to do. Now another color I, I really have on my palette that I use a lot is uh, burnt sienna. Now burnt sienna is really a dark orange. And it belongs up here in the orange category. But with that... Uh, with that burnt sienna, I can take that and I can mix it with uh, a blue. I can use cerulean blue now. So I'm picking up another blue. Now that's a, another blue I have on my palette. And with a proper with a proper moisture, I can make a nice little gray out of that with that. Burnt sienna. Burnt sienna mixed with blue will give you a, a gray or all kinds of grays. The last color I'll talk about here is uh, royal blue. Royal blue is the darkest color on my palette and it's it's probably uh, as far as I know, as far as I've known in my research, Obine is the only one that controls or has uh, royal blue and it's a beautiful color. But what I use it for is it for my dark. I don't have black on my palette, but what I'll do is I'll take royal blue and I'll mix, like for example, burnt sienna with the royal blue, and I'll come up with a dark color that's 
matches any black you'll see. And I can also put a glycerin crimson in there. I didn't talk about that one. That's another beautiful color. Oh, uh, that's in the red category. Alizarin crimson is a dark red, and that that moves toward the blue. That moves toward the blue red zone of the colors. So a mixture of colors uh, on the palette. You really, you could get away with uh, the primaries: red, blue, and yellow. And you may want to pick up a secondary orange and another uh, maybe a purple and then a green that would give you six colors and from those six colors you can pretty well mix any combinations of colors that you need uh, and the, the mixtures are probably more important in your paintings because it gives you variety every time you mix one it's going to be a little different than the next time but that's that's what you want you want variety but sometimes you want to pick up a color that's uh, like orange or or the light green, you may have a light green you want to use in your paintings. And I also have, uh, you know, I have others. I have other special colors that I can use. Uh, here's a, here's an opera, and I mix that with an opera, an opera color. I mix it with uh, also another blue I have on my palette. It makes a beautiful gray or purple. Peacock blue, that's peacock blue mixed with opera gives me a beautiful purple. And if I was doing flowers or doing a floral scene or even a garden scene, those kind of colors I can put in there to give me a little brighter uh, color if I need it. So again, those are kind of special colors. Uh, the thing I like to do and show you, the last thing I want to show is when when you when you play with your colors. Uh, I'll do it down here at the bottom. You can take your lightest. Let me move this up. You can take your lightest color. In this case is uh, lemon yellow. Now pick up a little bit of orange move it right next into it. So I'm gonna make a little spectrum chart here with my colors. And then I'll just give you a practicing, also mixing them together. And you get a graduated scale of your palette. And this gives you a color spectrum of your colors. And also give you a little opportunity to practice uh, mixing the colors. Here I mixed a little bit of blue, cobalt blue in with that red, and that gives me a purple. Then I can pick up the green. And if I want to complete the circuit, I go back to yellow again. Watch my brush. So there, I've gone around the uh, color wheel. I've gone from yellow to orange to red, from red to purple, purple to blue, blue to green, and then from green to yellow. And it goes on and on and on. So with that um, little demonstration, I wanted to show you, number one, the colors on my palettes, the, the whole bind paints I have, the kind of paper I use, and the brushes. Uh, round brushes and the riggers are, are good for brush strokes. The round brush gives me a nice, if I'm making trees or lines or whatever, I can use the round brush. And with a rigger brush, if I'm drawing lines, uh, fence, fence railings, I can use my rigger brush. So it gives me a lot of variety of strokes that I can use with those three brushes.
So with three brushes, six different colors that I've described, and good quality, artist quality paper, you are ready to paint and come out with a good result. Okay, that finishes up my demo on paper, paints, and brushes. And uh, I enjoyed that little exercise. And I think you need to look at your palette and get your colors and brushes and paper out and try some of that. And also look at the advantages of looking at other colors. Now you can go to my website, everswatercolors.com and I have a supply page on there. And I have the paper, which I, uh, I provide in half sheets which is 22 by 15 size. And then uh, I have the colors, all the colors of my palette are on there and I have all the brushes that I'm using. I enjoyed this little demonstration of my product, some of my products and some of the materials I use. So uh, that's it for today. And uh, I wanna wish you good well, have a nice day and I'll see you next time.